Hey guys, Scott Drummond here. Just wanted to do a quick time lapse video about how I uh, kind of color my comic book pages. Uh, I do all my coloring in Photoshop. I mean, you do it all in this Cintiq here, this big monitor. Basically, I kind of use what I've done before, sort of take that and, and, and make it into the new page. You'll see all the process here. I'm gonna switch this to the screen view and then uh, we can kind of get into it. So this is usually how I start out. Basically, I've got a, a page on the left that is a page that I've previously done, and I got a page on the right that I got back from my flatter. The flatter basically takes all the line art, the black and white line art, and puts flat colors behind the proper shapes. So like the skin is the one color for a character, uh, shirt's another color, uh, walls are different colors, and all that kind of fun stuff. So uh, basically, at this point, I go through and change some of those flat colors to the colors that I actually want to use. And I'll go through and uh, I'll open up another PSD here in a second of another page to get uh, Mariana's lip color right. It's important to kind of keep those colors consistent from page to page so that everything looks kind of, you know, right as, as you're reading through the story, even though I'm kind of going through and only doing this one page at a time. The next step is basically I'm going to go through and grab a purple color that I've got in this previous uh, PSD on the left and... Uh, do a quick overlay over all the bits uh, that have color on the right hand side and set that layer as sort of at 50% or no it's the 30% so that uh, kind of get that purple color and make kind of keep everything consistent and and get a good feel throughout the room on top of that layer I make a, another multiply layer uh, it's about 50% and kind of cut in all these shadows so I'm basically going to try to you know, show that there's a light source coming in from the right hand side on her uh, and, and cut in these little bits of shadows to you know, push those the, that form a little bit more. Um, so you can see I got that, you know, bit a shadow on the, the left hand side and I'm using the pencil tool for all of this. Um, I like to keep this kind of this nice cell, sh cell shaded look and so I'm using the pencil tool to do that. That way it's nice and clean and crisp and even though it looks kind of jagged if you zoom in too much, um, basically it won't look jagged when it's printed because of the way the colors kind of bleed together a little bit if you've got it at a high enough DPI, uh, the dots per inch or whatever. Uh, Basically, at this point, I'm using, I'm building these pages at size, so, uh, but at 1200 DPI, which is a really, really big page, but it's basically it's about the same as if I was building them at double size and at 600 DPI, which is, is around, you know, pretty industry standard, seems pretty normal to do. Um, I like to work that big so that you, you know, these, you know, quick uh, pencil tool kind of brush strokes don't look as jagged and will look correct when you zoom out uh, far enough. So, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing at this point. Just kind of more and more shadow getting moving in. I spent a lot more time on, um, you know, the, the, the big character on the left than I do uh, the individual pages or the individual panels. I think it's kind of important to have one big panel uh, that really takes most of your attention and, and focus on the page and because that's basically what's going to happen with the reader is they're going to oh, turn the page and see uh, one big thing and be like, oh man, that's pretty cool. And kind of the rest of it's just storytelling uh, and, and getting it all nice and consistent. Don't get me wrong, I'm not like slacking on this stuff, but I want to be sure to sort of make sure my main focus is in, in the one area. Like you can see, you know, since I'm zoomed in on this panel, I don't, I didn't put a lot of detail on her face, you know, in, in that one, uh, just because uh, she's in the background, doesn't need a ton of uh, detail there. And not only that, if you're, you know, putting too much detail in something that's in the background, it's gonna start to pop forward. Uh, just because of the amount of detail, it's sort of that atmospheric perspective concept of if things are in the background and far away, you don't see as much detail, and so there's no reason for you know people to render that much detail if you're going through and doing that. So, all right, looks like I'm almost done with these uh, cuts and the this all the shadow layer stuff. Uh, every once in a while, you'll see that I'm you know messing up and getting a full bleed of that uh, purple because I'm 
didn't close that shadow you got to make sure in Photoshop that you have to close all your bits if you're going to use the fill tool to uh, you know fill that shadow area after this I basically start to um, go through and put sort of a, the TV light there's a TV kind of uh, in front of the the dad in this in this scene and the way that I kind of express that TV light, there's a light blue light that's coming off of him. So I will be using sort of a light blue gradient scenario uh, to uh, kind of show that there's this light coming off of him. And that's sort of where I'm pushing my shadows to. So making sure that the shadows are sort of on the opposite side of where that TV would kind of cast those shadows. So let's see here. That's, you know, around that door frame and all that. Let's see again. Uh, so I'm gonna, yeah, basically, uh, one of the things I do to kind of save time is when I want to isolate one layer. Uh, if you hold the Option key or Alt key on a PC, uh, Option key on a Mac, uh, and hit that little eyeball on the layer, you'll solo that layer essentially, and that'll be the only layer that shows up. So I'll do. You see me kind of do that a lot here, uh, and that's kind of how I picked that blue color. Uh, from the TV is that I just soloed that layer and grabbed it on the PSD on the left. So yeah, now that I've got that blue color, I can go through with like a big soft uh, round brush and uh, kind of paint in that that light. I'm, I'm using the wand tool on the flats layer to grab the the parts uh, uh, that I really want to uh, grab and then use uh, on a different layer that brush that way I, I don't go outside of my lines outside of the colors that I want to go into so you can kind of see how I, I will highlight different spots and areas and do kind of big swaths and then kind of go in on top of that with a soft eraser and kind of you know grab some parts and pull it back so here in the background there I, I wanted that back to that, that wall, back wall to feel a little bit more uh, you know pushed into the background so I uh, put, you know put a big purple layer on top of that uh, you know have a big gradient there on this uh, third panel so you can show that there's you know they kind of that TV light coming in there uh, basically keeping things really soft for the light and kind of uh, doing a lot of more a lot more definition in in the shadow layers oh yeah and this guy's pretty fun so Basically, I'm going to push that light source that was in the flat, basically make that the same color as the flat behind it, and sort of go in with a big brush and sort of push those areas out. And then I'll grab it and mask off the sides there uh, to sort of make sure that it kind of feels uh, correct. And, and kind of push that light also over top of her hair so it, it feels like it's really bleeding into that and kind of like a real light would. I think I actually throw a little bit of a lens flare on here which is kind of fun. Just uh, do a quick, you have to fill in the black and like render that lens flare uh, which is kind of a silly thing. It's kind of fun to do it once in a while but I don't recommend it for a ton of it but uh, oh yeah I guess I kind of want these to be really consistent so I kind of go through and basically make them real clean. Uh, use the lasso tool here or a polygon tool to make it all very consistent and clean uh, and push those out farther uh, and go all the way to the edge and then I'll go through and uh, use that kind of burst area to, to make it so it sort of spills out a little bit and then I can't decide what color this should be I kind of think oh man maybe it should be like a pink I don't know uh, maybe it should be not that I have no idea Basically, I like this panel. I think she looks uh, good in this uh, kind of close-up shot. So I want to kind of make it a secondary shot, but I don't want to make it too wild to push, uh, basically make it so it's more important than that big open space shot right above it. So the pink would have done that. So that's why I'm using the kind of blue here instead. Make it a little more consistent with the page so it doesn't like just jump right off. Oh, it looks like right here I've decided, oh man, her eye is really weird. Uh, it's going in a different direction. I don't like that at all. So to kind of see that a little bit better, I flip the canvas. Basically, you get an image, image rotation, flip horizontal, and that'll flip the whole canvas uh, basically, you know, as if you were looking at it into a, in a mirror. And you can kind of at that point see it a little bit better. It'll help you kind of basically... Show where all your mistakes are, because it's you're seeing it with kind of a fresh eye, fresh light, uh, and, and so that's kind of what, how I was able to 
find a better spot for her eye. It was looking a little weird before, and I was like, ah, I gotta just, I gotta just fix this. It was kind of freaking me out. So pretty easy. So here's that lens flare I was talking about, just uh, kind of going through, and then I move it around, put it right above there, twist it a little bit, and then put it down at a lower opacity. And that's about it. Uh, I think that's the last step. So if you uh, got any questions, let me know. Uh, please like uh, this guy. You know, subscribe to my channel. I'll be, I'll be doing more of this stuff. So, yep, leave me a comment if you got any questions. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.